Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and in this episode, I take this casting that I despise, the Turbone Charged, and try to make it even crappier than it is. So yeah, I decided to kind of challenge myself, and I have a bunch of castings that I'll never do anything with. And I thought, well, you know what? Let's try to see if I can find something that I don't like, but has some potential to be kind of cool. So I decided to pick this turbone charged car and kind of hack it up. I mean, I wanted to keep some of the originality of it, but those the arms had to go. The, the complete canopy, I decided to cut in half and... If once I stripped this, I actually found that it really wasn't all that bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Um, unfortunately, I lost a lot of footage on this because I some of it I didn't record because I actually wasn't planning on even showing this. I'm also going to do a little tutorial on soldering brass, like if you're making a roll cage or a custom frame. Uh, so I decided to add that to this, and that's kind of really, in hindsight, that's really what I was making a video for. This I happen to be doing at the same time, and I was recording some of it. Um, so it's not really a full video on the actual casting itself. But I pretty much cut the arms off. I decided to detail paint as much as I possibly could. Um, you know, I stripped the, the body. I put some cool rims on it. Um, and once I had stripped it, I realized you know, there was some cool, cool features to this. Um, you know, so I decided to kind of go that route and paint it, paint it red and, and add a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, it, overall, again, it, this wasn't a video that I wasn't even going to post. And um, I'm just throwing it together because I actually needed to put the content in for the for the quick brass tutorial that I was doing. Um, I was doing like five projects at once, and this was just one of those. I just wanted to see if I could do it and stick with it throughout the whole thing and uh, not throw it up against the wall. So um, mission accomplished. Uh, it actually came out pretty good, surprisingly. Um, you know, I primed everything, and then I really just broke out all my paints and decided to brush up on my detail painting, uh, trying to get it as much small details as possible um, i went through a lot of brushes threw away some of my old ones that weren't working um, i'd recently cleaned my shop and um ended up losing a few things here and there <laughs> uh, but this project you know not every project you do is a, is a winner and you know sometimes the stress of just doing a project, especially when you have to video them all the time, um, it gets to you after a while. So this was kind of one of those, I'm not even a video yet, but I'll turn it on just in case. And, you know, I just wanted to have fun with it. And, and I did, I had, I had a good time. It was one of those castings that, you know, I, I honestly didn't care how it turned out. So it surprisingly was actually enjoyable for a change. Um, not that I don't enjoy doing this, it's just there are times where the stress of trying to hurry up and get a video out every week or every 10 days and making sure the content's fresh and relevant and, you know, it just, after a while, it just gets to you. So to just do a fun build like this where you just don't give a crap how it turns out um, it was kind of cool. So you can see I did the skull. Um, I'm going to paint it this splash paint red. It's like a metallic red. Um, it's a base coat clear coat system so you can see here I did the base coat and then I did the silver on the panels which you could see after you get rid of the paint that was on it um, so really after that it's just a matter of clear coating it and putting it all together I even clear coated the interior of the motor um, or the jet engine if you recall a few weeks ago I did a jet engine car the moon eyes one so um, I was doing this kind of almost at the same time so you know, again, it's just one of those things that, you know, you try to have some fun with it. But again, I was doing this mainly for the tutorial aspect of it. And there's going to be times, um, there's a lot of ways to do different things. I found, um, I have this metal block that I had kicking around this, my shop and I brought it, brought it home to work with. It's just a nice, solid 
piece of steel to work with. But sometimes, you know, you can use a finer um, piece of brass and it allows you a little bit more flexibility than styrene. So I'm just using a regular uh, soldering iron, flux, and some solder. And pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some, everything I have is K&S. So it's stuff you can find at any local hobby, hobby shop. Um, you get different sizes. It all works the same, uh, just a matter of how long you have to heat it up. Uh, but again, there's times where you need, or it's a lot easier to actually just use brass and solder it together than it is to try to, you know, use styrene and, and cut and glue and get the right angle. And it, sometimes it's just a pain in the neck. So, you know, I've been playing around with soldering and trying to come up with different different ways of doing it the best way is if you're going to make something and you want two of something identical make a jig you know make make some sort of a um, platform that you can screw into and then use that to form whatever it is you're going to do so you can have two pieces that are identical um, you know bend wise if there's a lot of complicated bends in it it's just easier um, and always i found that the flux works wonders um both ends or whatever you're going to solder together just really put a decent amount not decent, i mean don't soak the hell out of it but put a decent amount of flux on it i just kind of dip each end in the flux and uh it just helps with the brass just a little bit um, so here i'm just kind of taking one piece and i made a not even a square out of it. i'm just using it as an example um but you want to solder those two pieces together and then you can kind of form it afterwards if you need to um, but the trick with this is just put a little bit on your tip of your uh, soldering gun soldering iron whatever it is you're using you know make sure it's hot i got the uh, soldering iron with a small tip so it just makes it a little bit a little bit more convenient um, and a little bit more controlled when it comes to where the solder goes so i'm pretty much i put a little bit on the tip and then i'm just kind of spreading it around and i have the solder ready to kind of go back on the tip a little bit if i need to spread a little bit more and by that point the brass is hot and it flows really really smooth and what's great about this is after you can just grind it down with a sanding disc and make it nice and smooth and you can do whatever you want with it but it's instantly hard you can't break it i mean you could if you really wanted to but see you, know, you can see here if it's bubbled up a little bit it's a little bit more than you want and you know you, you there's gonna be times you put a little bit more solder than you want so um you know this works great um, i highly recommend not doing it the way i'm doing it just from a safety standpoint as a disclaimer uh, don't do what i do just do as i say um the other thing too is if some of the bigger pieces if you want complex um, angles and bends and all that stuff i picked this um I don't know what even what it's called. It's just a butane torch. Um, I got it from the cooking section at um, Bed Bath and Beyond or some shit like that. And uh, you know you can use it for your souffles, but just heat up the brass, and then you can pretty much bend it however you want. Don't touch it with your hands. Again, another safety disclaimer. Uh, you can see I'm using pliers just as an example, or you can see my thumb actually. But I'm heating it up, <laughs> and then it allows me to bend it however I want. And you can do that multiple times and it just gives you the flexibility so play around with it it's one of those things that you can kind of have some fun and it opens up some opportunities for you when you're doing customs and uh might open up a new world for you for frames roll cages and all that kind of stuff if you like the content make sure you like this video and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of all future videos not sure if you guys are aware but i do have an outlaw custom club youtube membership uh, with special benefits uh, some members only content like website discounts to customs that i have for sale behind the scenes videos progress pictures and content so on and so forth make sure you check it out so again this is what i started with it's not that bad of a casting i know i kind of given it a hard time but overall not all that bad the arms had to go um just one thing i just could not stand about it it was just horrible um and then i cut the canopy in half but other than that you know really just a wheel swap and then detail painting and sometimes just little projects like this that aren't super super custom um where you're hacking up stuff um i know it's kind of just painting a wheel swap essentially um but sometimes those are good it's a good way to get your feet wet and have some fun 
this is what I ended up with. I used the red line wheels. Um, I just did some different detail painting. Uh, just kind of just went with it and just had a had a good time and had no pressure and I actually enjoyed myself and that's what this hobby is all about and being able to unwind after a long day of work or a crappy week or you know just something crappy going on in your life and you just need to not think about anything sometimes little projects like this are, are, are much more enjoyable and helps tremendously um, and it's and it's not really something that's costing you a fortune, you know, it's a 99 cent car and some, some materials. So enjoy. I know it's not the greatest in the world. It's not, you know, up to my normal standards, but, um, I had fun with it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, let me know the, in the comments down below, if you've ever customized something just for the heck of it and ended up liking it, even though you had zero expectations of it turning out good, but thanks for watching. And I will catch you on the next one.